How are you, Luke? Hey, how are you, my friend? Nice to see yeah. you. Again. Yeah, you too. Um, I'm going to begin by obviously, well, talking about the loss of justice. But what, what was it that um, initially attracted you to getting involved in this project? Well, I, I'd never done a British comedy. I'd done it. I did this comedy years ago with Samuel Jackson and Eugene Levy called The Man, which was my first comedy ever. Quite nerve wracking, to be honest with you. I remember I was facing off with Sam Jackson in this comedy and looking at it, and, and I said to him, "You're you're Samuel Jackson, aren't you?" He goes, yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, and then so the, my next comedy was this very cold, chilly British set with wonderful pr uh, producer and writer Janie and Joan Collins and my buddy uh, Martin Kemp and beautiful Kim Marsh and, and just everyone rolling their sleeves up. I was, it was, you know what it was? It was an introduction also to British filmmaking that I hadn't done since I did this movie with Charlie and a couple of other movies with friends. But I walked onto this set not knowing anybody and thought, wow, look at, look at this crew, look at this, this team of actors that just... I'm mucking in. It was a really beautiful thing to feel so welcome on a British set because it had been years, I think, before I found myself being able to do that. But comedy, Guy Siner, you know, jumping around with farcical elements, but then keeping it tethered in a very dramatic, painful place. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's not, it's certainly not a, it's a story of sadness and of victory. So it's, you know, yeah, uh, it's, it's funny you mentioned that that sort of moment with Samuel L. Jackson, because I mean, obviously, you know, you're you've been in the, the public eye for, for decades and you've played at huge stadiums, been in huge movies. But do you still get that little voice somewhere in the back of your head that just goes, bloody hell, that's that's Samuel L. Jackson? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do you think? I mean, literally, I was the cheeky guy. And one time we were in a trailer with him and I said to him, he got he he likes to film near golf courses. So he can always play golf before he films. And um, well, I mean, if you can, if you're in that position, why not? Right. But um I remember saying to him, because he was, you know, my golf game is not particularly fantastic. And he said to me, I told him, mate, I've got my handicap down to like, you know, to whatever it was too. He said, really? And then I held up my little, you know, game thing I was playing. And he went, dude. But uh, he's, you know, it was a lot of fun on set with these guys. But I abs absolutely pinch myself all the time. I mean, I I've been blessed to have a few of those moments. So I, I don't know if that goes, if you stop being a fan, then you stop learning, you stop being inspired, you stop realizing that, wow, there's that thing to aspire to. So there's always someone in a room that I enjoy looking to and thinking, wow, that's what a great, great piece of creativity there, or what a great person. You know? mm -hmm. I'm going to assume one of those people was Joan Collins. How is it working with, with her? I mean, she's a, an icon in this, in, over here in the UK. I have to be honest with you, Joan Collins, it's no mystery to me now why that woman's been so wonderfully successful for so many years. She mm. shows up on set, she knew her lines, knew her day. She was in character, stayed very in character all day long. Super pro, as soon as the day done, hugs, kisses, you know, just an absolute professional. And just... It's her, it's, you know, it's Dame Joan Collins. So she has this awe about her and the crew were very, you know, well behaved. And, uh, but like I say, at the end of the day, all hugs and hugs and smiles. But I so enjoyed working with her. Because mm -hmm. obviously, you know, you mentioned the films kind of the, the way the kind of sadness plays against the kind of comedic, more farcical elements. But that seems quite fitting of kind of Christmas. I think if you look at some of the great Christmas movies, they have this kind of nice comedic edge, but there is a kind of sad, profound element to Christmas. So I'm just wondering about uh, your sort of favourite Christmas movies. What, what, you, what, what do you go to when it comes to the festive period? What's your every year? What do you like to watch? For me, I, I don't find melancholy any relationship towards sadness or, or sorrow. Melancholy for me is part of my character. So I'm, I'm very happy, I'm very up, and I'm driven, but I'm melancholy because I like to think, I like to contemplate. I, people's suffering really hurts me or somebody having a tough day, you know, or, or somebody being lovely. Um, my Christmas movies is one like It's a Wonderful Life where there's an enduring element, there's an overcoming of something. I think Christmas brings with it, it can either exacerbate joy or it can exacerbate and, and you put light upon the struggle of that year, as we've all been through, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But um, I think those movies that embrace the uplifting as much as they embrace the struggle are the ones that bring, you know, the hot tears to the eye. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, I think overcoming anything and watching someone do that, whether it be the Olympics or a movie and anything in between. Uh, I love the fact that putting light on this, this story is about really just standing six inches taller if you, if you can, or just a little taller and remembering who you are, the bit of self-worth, a big chunk of hope, and one step into that, and you might find yourself with a victory in your hand. You know? yeah. It's interesting, you mentioned, I always cried during the Olympics. Seeing someone succeed is like the biggest tearjerker. Um, but it's... now we can say these things and we're still tough dudes, you know. We can yeah, exactly. <laughs> with this time, there's many other areas we could look at, but the beautiful thing is you could say what you said 
you know, it's nice, isn't it? Talking more of our emotions and our vulnerabilities. I think it's thank, it's like almost like thank goodness we can. You know. Yeah. No, I completely agree. I was going to ask as well because obviously you you've been in America, but, but I was wondering how different Christmas is over, over there. I mean, I'm assuming they don't serve Brussels sprouts, which must be one bonus. But is it is it a different kind of feeling, or is it still got that kind of same essence that that you got from your your Christmases here? Well, Brussels sprouts have become trendy. I think Brussels sprouts are the new whatever. You know, but they uh, <laughs> they're everywhere here. But um, I would say that Christmas is not as vibrant as in the UK. For example, Halloween is huge here. There's lots of stuff. It's fun. But I remember the first Christmas I had here. It's very much about the meals and this. But Christmas in the UK, I'd say, is a lot more vivid and a lot more. It feels much more Christmassy just because I think also the weather. But um, no, I, I would I would much, much, much rather be there at Christmas this year because it just feels you can walk the streets without a plan. You can go around London and just wrap up and put on a beanie and and not have a plan and go just feel Christmassy, see the lights. You, you, you can't really do that. You'd have to go to a mall and that doesn't work for me. So. No. And I mean, one thing that will be in many Christmas stockings uh, this year, I'm sure, is your, your new, your new uh, single. I was just wondering about what you can tell us about that because that's out in the middle of December. Is, is it, uh, is it, what can sort of fans of yours expect from this, from this new piece of music you've got? Well, well firstly, thanks for mentioning. I, I have a, yeah, it's coming out December 11th. It's called Free. Mm. It's not really a Christmas single. It's a song. It's mm. one song that's going to be coming, you know, we included on the album, which we're recording right now. I've recorded three. We've got six or seven tracks down on Rough. But it's basically a song that, you know, like in the lyrics, it says, when I wake up in the morning, face the daylight, sun, tell those I love them, and that the life has just begun. It's a song that's, I want to be free. I want to be me. I just want to be. It's, it's about what we feel. I do think we want to spread our wings wider, all of us. So we all being patient and we can containing maybe our impatience and all the other emotions that are flying through our veins these days. But it's a song that can be sung again, that we spoke before, it can embrace the melancholy and the frustrations, but also, it, you know, it's about, and life has just begun. We can shape this as a new beginning, as, as whether it's favorable or otherwise, it's not debate that, let's just do it, let's make it better. And so that song, I wanted to write a song as an artist that's not thinking about being a single or, you know, we shoot the video next week and it's just, I don't know, it's just a song that I wanted to put out that was both my musical taste, hip hop grooves, I'm a drummer, so that I, a vocal that feels true, an acoustic kind of lay down, I think people are going to dig it. It's not for my fans, it's for people that dig music. So I, I, I will see where it hits and where it lands. Mm -hmm. It must be great because I mean you do, you're doing this kind of profession. You've been doing this for a number of years, but it is one of those uh, things, art, when it comes to your acting, all your 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 writing and, and your singing, that you can kind of do it forever, can't you? I mean, it's one of those great things that whenever you get that kind of streak of art, art artistry and you kind of think, oh, I've got a creative spark, you can just put pen to paper. You can just say, yes, I want to play that role or do that. That must be so fulfilling to know that you're kind of doing a job that has no expiry date in some ways. You can just it just whenever you however you want to kind of play it. A beautiful observation. I think I'd also say that's applicable to everybody. I mean, what I'd say, especially now, the arts, writing, that poetry, books, painting. I mean, I, I, I paint every day. But mm. it's, um, I do think it feeds the soul. I think it's extremely nourishing. Like you said, it has no expiration date. Mm. But I think I've found myself in a blessed position where I have a support system with the fans that have enabled me certainly the privilege of being able to try and like this single, I didn't want it to be, you know, the big fanfare. Thankfully, yet again, I'm getting supported, but I, it doesn't go missed on me. I'm like, wow, I'm, this is a very, very privileged place. Like you say, I can just try and after 30 odd years in the game, I can. I, you know, it's about creative spirit. There is, you know, the great thing about a subjective art form is that, like you rightly said, there's no wrong. There's no right. It's just an expression. And expression is what's needed from all of us. So I say, yo, guys, get your paintbrushes play some songs buy a guitar whatever you got to do let's all let's join in because it'll help us get through the day it really does you know yeah because i mean because obviously as someone like yourself who's always seems to be so kind of creatively busy i mean how's this year been for you because for a lot of people i mean they've really taken this year as a chance just to take a breather because i mean i'm sure you travel a lot with work and you're always kind of on movie sets or touring and stuff like that so have you quite enjoyed a bit of downtime have you been kind of itching to to get back out there and, and start working again and doing stuff I think at first it was just like, oh my God, the first, I, I had never painted before. I've done 17 big art pieces now that would not exist if it wasn't for this time. My single wouldn't exist if it wasn't for this time. I've had a chance to, because you know what, careers have, an, have a way, don't they, of pulling you along. You are in the career. So when they, when they go on pause, I had an opportunity. I started painting within a week or two of the pandemic. I just thought I've always wanted to try. I thought it would be a terrible thing, but I, it ended up being something that's so part of me. 
And the same with the music. We bring in the amps, the things, the producers are here. We're recording a, um, we're recording a, a very high standard, mm. but I don't know. It, it, it feels like a blessed time to find out who I am. And I know from the conversations I've had with friends, I'm doing that through a creative exploration. Mm. I'm also doing it through meditation and prayer. But again, like everybody, I think the outcome will be a more conscious community. And I don't think that that can turn out terribly. I hope to God that that has ramifications of a beautiful reinvention rather than waiting for us to hear to it. Frankly, philosophies and behaviors that weren't necessarily so fantastic. You know, I think there has been a reshaping. And I, from my own observation personally, I think it's a reshaping that's not so bad. You know? Yeah, well, it's good that you sort, of, you sort of managed to stay so creative. At the beginning of lockdown, I said to myself, I'm going to learn French and I'm going to learn the piano. And I haven't even brought a piano. And all I can say is bonjour. So you've done a lot, a lot more than I have. Oh, no, so I don't <laughs> yeah, I'm really far behind. <laughs> One word, I, I'm being the eternal optimist. I, was, I don't believe in the glass half full or half empty. I believe the glass is always full. So we have a word. So yeah, There we yeah. go. We're getting there. <laughs> One step into your list. <laughs> so, uh, so what does uh, 2021 hold for you? I'm sure 2020 obviously had its own uh, sort of whole new path uh, that none of us could have foreseen. But have you, what have you got kind of lined up for next year? Have you got any projects you, you're looking forward to? Yeah, the album is coming out. We've got two more singles coming off of it before. So three in total than the album. I'm producing a movie called The Cut, which is a really cool movie. I think we're filming in Malta, if, if, if we can. Um, Bross album, um, uh, more, more films. I've got an exhibition that I'm going to be, be bring, I'm going to be bringing my art exhibition to London. Um, I'm just trying to find ways to create the most inclusive experiences possible. I'm looking for virtual concerts if we can't do them literally. I'm not going to sit and not give all the audience something. I want, I, I, I've suggested loads of cameras, live, beautiful mixes, interactiveness, bring people there, create a way to say, look, I know I'd love to see the whites of your eyes, but we have to find the next closest thing if we can't. So to 2021 for me, I'm going to try and be a powerhouse as far as creative output to create events, uh, interaction because I think people need like I say in this lyrics I have to say love and laughter love fun and laughter can't go away we've got to wake up in the morning blah 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 uh, it's a lyric that's true to what I'm going to be doing in 2021 I'm going to be philanthropic powerfully as much as I can I'm going to be creative and uh, try and create events where social distancing is adhered to if that's what's needed but I will not try I will not stop trying to find ways to bring people together, adhere to every single rule and give us a chance to at least see each other and make a noise in each other's company. I'm going to look very avidly at solutions that adhere to the rules so we don't find ourselves not with each other anymore. And as an entertainer, I work for my audience. So I'm going to go to, go to school and go to work and try and pull in lots of creative opportunities and experiences for people to find ways to, to be together. Because frankly, I'm just, a, I'm, you know, I don't have any hair, man, but I'm a hippie, dude. Totally. <laughs> uh, well, uh, well, I mean, well, you've started off well, because you've got, every, now there's a, a nice little comedy called The Loss of Justice. They're out this Christmas it's for really, people to watch. Really. So good start as far as I'm concerned. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Luke. It's been a real pleasure thank speaking you. to you again. You. And best of luck with um, everything you've got on next year. It sounds like an exciting time for you. I just want to say to you, to anyone watching, like, just a big hug. I, I, I see the emotion in our eyes. I see the emotion in our hearts. And I, and I, and I feel it. And I just think, you know what? Only love out there and thank you for the support. That I, as, as a British boy, the, the country's been real good to me and I thank you for that. Cool, brilliant. Thank you so much, Luke. Have a lovely day. Come on, take care. Bye-bye. See you later. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!